All right, in part four, we are practicing um, some systems that we're solving using the substitution method. So notice that in all four of these, there is an instance where one variable, either y or x, is fully isolated. So in like 4a, in our second equation, we have y equals, so I could think of that as meaning y is isolated. In 4b, y equals x minus 4, y is isolated. In 4c, it's our top equation, y equals 2x plus 3. And in 4d, it's our bottom equation, and it is x that is isolated, but it doesn't matter what variable is isolated. So x equals 6y minus 11. So typically, we use substitution um, often when we have something like this, where in 4d, for example, look at that one, um, we can substitute 6y minus 11 in place of x. So um, let's try that one. So uh, I want to, in my system, I want to replace the x in my other equation with the expression 6y minus 11 because those things, um, again, at the point of intersection, like at the place when x and y are equal. So at the solution, those things are interchangeable. But as one of my students pointed out in one of my classes, they're not always interchangeable. Like if I graph two lines and they're not the same line, then I can't always interchange my x's. But in this case, we're trying to find the solution. So we're considering that point in time that both equations have the same value of x and the same value of y, assuming they have a solution. All right, so I'm gonna take my top equation and substitute six y minus 11 where x was. Remember always we substitute into parentheses minus 4y equals negative 3. So every other piece of my top equation should be there, right? So like this was everything in my original equation. The only difference is where there was an x before. We now have a 6y minus 11. Okay, so now we just distribute because our goal is to solve for y. Sometimes we find x first, sometimes we find y first, and it doesn't matter. It just depends on in what way we substitute. So when we distribute the 5, I get 30y minus 55. Then we still have a minus 4y equals negative 3. Oops, then we generally want to combine any like terms. So 30y and negative 4y is what, 26y? Right, so then we could add our 55 to both sides. And negative 3 plus 55 is 52. Oh, wait a minute. I feel like I made a mistake. Did I make a mistake? No, never mind. Um, okay, 52. <laughs> All right, and then lastly, we could divide both sides by our coefficient of y, 26. And so when we do that, 52 divided by 26 is two. Okay, so we're not done yet. We only have half our solution. Our solution is both an x and a y. So um, remember, we want to substitute y equals two into either of our original equations. Um, typically, the equation where the other variable, so x in this case, is isolated. That seems to be the easier one. So if I substitute two for y, this becomes six times two minus 11, and 12 minus 11 is one. So x equals one. So we're pretty sure our solution is x equals one, but to know for a fact that we didn't make a mistake, we should just check it using the other equation. So using this top equation, if I substitute one for x and two for y, I should get a negative three on my left-hand side. So that becomes five minus eight, and that is in fact negative three on the left, so that checks out. All right, so our solution is the ordered pair one comma two.
All right, in the problem beneath this, um, that's a little different from the solving ones, it says that the following system of equations has infinite solutions, infinitely many solutions. To be clear though, that doesn't mean every ordered pair is a solution. So we're asked to circle all of the choices below that are solutions and think how do we know if an ordered pair is a solution to the system or not. So um, if, if we have infinite solutions, these two equations must be the same. One is written in standard form, one is written in slope intercept form. So to test our solutions to see if they, if the ordered pairs below work, we could just substitute them in to either or both equations because we should get the same thing since, since there are infinitely many. If we only had one solution, we would definitely need to check it against both equations. So um, the way I would work through these is just check them, right? So like um, for choice A, if x is zero, y should be three. So if I check that maybe using the top equation, three equals one fifth times zero plus three. Yeah, that checks out. If you check it in the bottom equation, it's like zero minus five times three equals negative 15. That also checks out. So that is a solution to the system. Let's look at B. Choice B is uh, X is five, Y is 10. Nope, I said that backwards, X is 10, Y is five. So you could again use either form of the equation. I'm gonna use standard form. So 10 minus five times five should be negative 15. That is, if, if it's a solution that is. So 10 minus 25 is in fact negative 15. All right, so B is also a solution. Well, let's look at C. At least one of these has to not work. All right, so for C, three is X, Y is five. Um, I'm gonna use standard form again. So three minus five times five is negative 15. Well, I know this isn't true because 10 minus 25 is negative 15, not three minus 25. So since that does not work out, C is not a solution to the system. All right, two more. If I plug in D, that one um, should also check out. You could plug it into either form of the equation, but D is also a solution. And finally, E is not a solution either. So um, going back to the question, how do you know if an ordered pair is a solution to the system or not? Well, the ordered pair makes both equations true. So it satisfies both equations in the system. So um, like the very first choice we did A, we said it worked when we plugged it into the top equation in slope intercept form, and it worked when we plugged it into the bottom equation in standard form. So um, again, when a solution has infinite, or sorry, when a system has infinite solutions, not every single ordered pair out there is a solution. That's not what it means, but it means any ordered pair on the line. So if I think of this graph of y equals 1 fifth x plus 3, any point on the line is a solution.